Hi and welcome to another wildlife photography video. In this vlog you're going to see me out early in the morning in search of some really atmospheric bird photographs. At the moment we're having a warm spell and clear nights which means a good chance of mist early on and we've definitely got some mist today. In my opinion, these are just the best conditions for wildlife photography. I always try and make the most of these mornings. So I'm at one of my local nature reserves today and there's just so much going on this time of year. Late August, September and into October. Really good for wildfowl because um, you get a lot of movement. So you get some birds that are kind of moving from different parts of the country and also when we get into autumn, we get some of the geese that are coming in from abroad as well. So quite a productive time now. So what I'm looking to do this morning is just to shoot handheld. I'm just going to walk around, try and make the most of these conditions, looking for any birds, whether it's on the water or preferably in flight. And I've got with me my Canon 400mm, I've got my 1DX and the 400mm f5.6 fixed lens, which I just find absolutely perfect for hand holding. And I've got it attached to this strap, which is a black rapid strap. That's just ideal because it kind of hangs by your waist and you can just pull it up and shoot straight away. It's really quick and easy to use. So when I'm out in conditions like this with mist and fog, I do have specific settings I like to use. And the first one is always to use auto ISO. So for the period of time where there's still enough mist around that you've got a real range of exposure going on, I like to use automatic ISO. And then also importantly for me, I always overexpose a bit. So I'll always add about plus two thirds, maybe a bit more sometimes, add a little bit of overexposure. And the reason for that is if I don't, I just find that the images come out a little too underexposed for my liking. Then also using aperture priority, I have done a couple of videos where I've mentioned why I prefer aperture priority uh, as opposed to manual with automatic ISO. So feel free to have a look at one of those. And, and then with the aperture, I like to close the aperture down a little bit to f6.3 or f7.1 or f8, just because it, uh, it makes it a little bit sharper but also it just increases the depth of field slightly, which can be really useful for flight shots. And particularly if you get more than one bird, like here there's lots of flocks flying around at the moment. So if you get more than one bird or you get a group of birds, just closing down the aperture is just gonna help the depth of field throughout the whole image. I'm using a fairly wide aperture, so that's gonna help keep the shutter speed reasonably high. Uh, with the auto ISO, I do actually set it as well. So I set an upper limit of the ISO, usually for 1600, just cause I don't like to go above um, just because I don't like to go above 1600 too much. Um, most of the time that's going to give me a really fast shutter speed for flight shots. The only issue is first of all before the sun's come up when it's very dark the shutter speeds are pretty low so you kind of have to make a decision whether you bump up the ISO or you just go with a slightly slower shutter speed and try and use good technique. Also really important that I've got it set on the continuous autofocus. So on Canon it's AI servo, all the cameras it'll probably be ASC for autofocus continuous. So make sure you've got it on the continuous tracking autofocus, especially for situations like this where I'm walking around, I don't know what's gonna happen, particularly birds that might be flying right over me without warning. So make sure I keep it on that tracking autofocus. And I've also got it set to a continuous frame rate so it's on fairly high speed. I've just knocked it down a bit so it's on nine frames a second.
um, uh, well, a lot of the mist is actually starting to disappear now. Um, so that makes it a bit more difficult. I think the best thing to do now is to try and kind of shoot towards something like a hillside or uh, a line of trees. If I'm shooting more towards sky, it's not going to show up at all. So if you do that, if you shoot towards something like particularly um, a more distant hillside, then you can get like a really nice layered effect. Uh, having said that, it's gone very quiet. Well, it's definitely gone a bit quiet now. Um, I'm happy to get some shots of geese in flight. Nothing as good as what I've got in the past, but every day is different. Um, definitely the best time to try and get those shots is first thing in the morning and in the evening as well, because that's when they're actually flying to and from feeding grounds and roosting sites. So there tends to be the most movement then. Um, I certainly prefer the morning, mostly because you get more atmosphere, because you've got a chance of those early morning mists. Uh, looking at the cloud and the sun's gonna break above the cloud, probably within the next 10 to 15 minutes. So from that point on, we are really into bright blue sky sun for most of the day, I think. So, uh, so the best conditions are gonna be over pretty soon. If you're a regular viewer, you could certainly do me a favor because this is actually the first full vlog I film with a new camera, which is a Canon M50, and I'm really quite impressed. So um, just drop me a line in the comments box and let me know what you think of the video and audio quality, which I think is pretty good. Um, I'm gonna put a couple of videos on the screen, so if you wanna see more nature photography from me, Paul Miguel, do click one of these videos, and also click the subscribe button, which should be up here somewhere, and make sure you click on the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Until we meet again, I'll see you somewhere in nature sometime soon.